Good morning, my sisters and brothers. Welcome to the African Episcopal Church of St. Thomas here in the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. This morning, we begin our worship as I am standing here next to Fairmount Park and next to the Schuylkill River here in Philadelphia. We are reminded of the words of Jesus in our gospel lesson this morning when he says, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The church is secure and solid and standing on solid and holy ground.
Let us begin by confessing our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may be lost and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. When I've lost my direction, the compass for my way, you're the fire and the light. When the nights are long and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter that shatters all of my fears. When I'm all alone, your hand is there to hold. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good, perfect comes.
of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they answered, some say John the Baptist but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of jo Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the kingdom of heaven and the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was indeed the Messiah, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. At this time, let us receive for this week's meditation, the Reverend Joanne Jones, one of St. Thomas' own. You are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Leading up to today's passage, many have now had experiences of Jesus. These encounters have generated a range of reactions, fear, bewilderment, amazement, wonder, gratitude. Naturally, Jesus has become curious about what others think who he is, and he engages this exchange of questions and answers with the disciples and with us. To his first question, who do people say that the Son of Man is? The disciples say, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. They are hearkening back to an earlier time and tradition that is familiar to them. Then, as now, there is a danger in, trust, in trusting one's identity to others. Now, I imagine that there are a number of you here at St. Thomas who could say something about my identity. And yet, in the three years since I left here, there are new members who have no idea of who I am. How true this is in these days, as we witness the identity of citizen, immigrant, ethnicity, gender, Democrat, Republican, are all called into question. 
Those who are casual friends, social acquaintances, or clients have knowledge of our interiors that is little better than what many tourists absorb about a place through a couple of visits. But it is a serious question. To whom does one trust one's identity? And here, given the responses to Jesus' question, we can see how easily we bring our perspectives that are affected by our theology, denomination, ethnicity, culture, even perhaps gender, to Christ's identity. We must resist our inclination to project onto Jesus our particular cultural, theological, or denominational preferences and loyalties. After hearing their various answers, Jesus presses the disciples further, and Peter, our everyman, impulsive, unpredictable, eager to jump the gun, and in Matthew's account, the leader of the disciples, in a breathtaking, brilliant moment of revelation exclaimed, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Peter's words, his proclamation, testimony, witness, are a stunningly clear expression of who Jesus is to him. Stunning and clear, because others have called him Lord, teacher, or even son of David, holy one of God. All of these are insights into Jesus' unique identity, but Peter states it forthrightly. What makes Peter's response distinctive is that Jesus presses him for and rewards him with a powerful blessing. Jesus makes the most of this moment by responding to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, that is, Peter's understanding of the identity of Jesus is not the result of his thinking, but it is a gift. Indeed, a revelation from God. This revelation is the foundation of the church, and Jesus is calling for the formation of a new faith community placed in the context of the struggle to understand the identity and authority of Christ. The Greek word used here for the community, ecclesia, means to be called out, not meant to be a rejection of Israel and the teachings of the Torah, but a community, a church whose identity takes shape in the revelation of Christ's identity and mission. In other words, we are the church because of who Christ is in the world and in us. The question before us is how do we do this? How do we live this out? In such a time of domestic partisanship and divisiveness, we need this vision. When asked what sustained him in the dark days of opposing apartheid, Archbishop Desmond Tutu relied upon Ubuntu theology. Tutu's sense of Ubuntu comes from a Hosa proverb that means each individual's humanity is ideally expressed in relationship with others, or a person depends on other people to be a person. As Tutu wrote, a person is human precisely in being enveloped in the community of other human beings. To be is to participate. The greatest good here is not independence, but sharing interdependence. And interdependence is necessary for all persons so that they may grow and exercise their full potential as individuals and as a community. Complete dependence on God and on one's neighbors will yield a human identity. This human interdependence is established as creation, as we are created in God's image, our common imago dei, with our bodies, and as the body of Christ, we are the Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh,
the center of my Thank you, Mother Jones, for that inspiring message. May God continue to bless you on your journey of ministry. Let us now reaffirm our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 of your Book of Common Prayers. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us now pray together in the words our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and your mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Amen. At this time, I invite your personal prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings. Remember that especially those who are either hospitalized or in rehab centers, members of St. Thomas Church, Walter Blocker, Francina Norris, Regina Mitchum, Devereaux, Remembering also those who have died. May their souls rest in peace 
and rise in glory. Lord Jesus Christ, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning, we end this part of the service with a prayer of Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come life everlasting. At this time, we issue the call to Christian discipleship. If you are watching us this morning and participating in this service, and you do not belong to any church, any faith community, we ask you to prayerfully consider becoming a part of this community of faith, St. Thomas Church, one of the friendliest churches in the city, in the nation, and in the world. If you are interested and feel so called, please either call the parish office this week or send us an email expressing your desire to become part of this parish. Our closing final blessing this morning, I will be offering to you, standing where I began this service, in front of a big rock here in Philadelphia, near Fairmount Park, to connect us to the day's gospel, where Jesus says, on this rock, I build my church. Please now prepare for the blessing. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Have a very blessed week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Be to God.